Hey, what's up, guys? Brock here. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell, players. What's up, folks? Welcome to Life with Brock here at my workbench, a.k.a. the kitchen table, bringing you a custom repaint of this Hercules. I had a failed live stream event where I was going to be teaching you exactly how you can do this to your Hercules whenever the heck you get them. But unfortunately, my internet sucks, so I have to film my end result and hopefully you like it. Let me just bring up the figure up here to the front. Let's focus it on him. And let me talk about some of the things that I did. I gave this guy a wash. I gave this guy a repaint. I gave this guy a glaze of the veins and we're gonna talk about all of those things in a second. Also painted the doohickeys here on his leg, his shin pad, his knee pads and his foot guards. Also painted his weapons and all his body parts. We are going to talk about them at length. Oh, also his little uh, Wonder Woman wrist things, whatever the heck you call those. Yeah, Wonder Woman. I said Wonder Woman. I wish I had another figure for comparison to show you the uh, actually tremendous difference. Maybe I'll be able to superimpose one here from my old video. And as you can see, Hercules does look like he's got a tan now. And he's got some depth to his face. And everything else looks like it's been highlighted, which it has. And what it does, it just turns the regular Marvel Legend into a premium looking figure just with paint. I do have to say, as I was painting this figure, I was really fascinated uh, by the intricacies of the sculpt on this guy when I was spe specifically when I was painting the veins. Let me see if I can get this to focus up. The person who sculpted this figure is an absolute genius. I mean, roided out Hercules here. You can see that even a vein right there in his chest had the yeah, I, I, I painted those two players. But look at the veins. It just looks so realistic. Now, I've added a glaze to the veins, and I'll talk about how I did that in just a bit. But, I, man, great job. I, if you guys know who sculpted Hercules, and the face is, is phenomenal, too. Really great, great work by whoever, whoever did this work. Just fantastic, man. Please find out. Let me know. I want to give him a shout out as much as I can because this is a magnificent figure. Uh, you know, it's not the classic look, but the modern look, and it looks like it jumped out of the comics, but it's so phenomenal with the, the intricacies, like I said, of the sculpt. So let's talk about that. You guys are always asking me what paints I use. Let me put Herc back here. And uh, let me just talk through how I went about using some of these. So... This one right here is quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, washes to use. That's how I got the effects here on the face. The, you know, the shading on his eyes. And of course, the lighting is terrible right now. Let me see if I can get it right. Here we go. The shading on his, on his cheeks. His eyes are mainly done with that wash to get that. Now, I did add a little bit of highlights with this Ushabti uh, bone from Citadel, just on the cheeks and on the nose. And essentially what I did there, I just put a little bit and then I muted it out with my finger. So I would, and I, like I, I was going to show you this on the live stream, but I said uh, I had bad internet. I would put it on there, dab it out, same with the cheeks. And that's essentially what I did with all his muscles right here as well. But before I, I got into the Shabti bone, I did the flesh wash. And that's what creates, uh, obviously, if you're looking at the original figure, you're going to see he, this guy looks like he's got a little bit of a tan. It does tint the flesh. But what it does is it gets into the crevices of the muscles and it creates or brings out the definition of the sculpt. So what I would do is I would start uh, putting on the, uh, the, f the flesh wash and I would let it pool in the crevices and everything else I would wipe, I would wipe it down with a brush. 
all his uh, intercostals there I did and then I just it's layer by layer that's how I accomplished that so sorry you can't see the technique but that's the technique explained this Agrax Earthshade it's it's a wash from uh, Citadel it actually may be a little bit thicker than a wash but what I did with that is I went over the orange and even uh, the green and some of this tan hide right here all this stuff uh, the the um, whatever this face shield that he has on here I I used Agrax Earthshade everything because what that does again it just gives it a, a bolder look it gets into the crevices it brings out the details and it gives it a painted look and I'm not, I can't tell if this is molded in, in green but it almost looks like it was painted uh, I could be wrong but it definitely looks like it's painted now because it is this is essentially it's a watered down paint and that's what I used on pretty much everything on here including the pants but when I went to the brown that I actually used the the brown that I used on the juggernaut the mahogany which is one of my favorite paints to use one of my favorite colors to use and it's a, it's just a very rich deep brown that looks fantastic so I used that on the brown and then let me see let me move these over so uh, this is a, a base from Citadel uh, lead belcher I initially went over all the silver areas however I did like a, a one to one ratio with this glossy black from Vallejo to obtain the the darker color of that uh, of these straps and and I guess what it would be like a metal covering for his foot and ankles then once that's that was done then I went through and I highlighted with this chrome and I also used this uh, chrome to give the weathering effect let me I think maybe it's better if I just focus in like this and I just put a little bit on a brush wiped it down on a paper towel and then just lightly feathered on those corners and that's what gives it that that look that it's worn down at the edges I went through and I did uh, I also did the the shoe plates right there and these straps all the way around also did this little portion of I think where he would put his uh, another weapon I guess he could hold it there all right, what else did I do? Let's take a look at the hands real quick. So you can see, maybe you can appreciate a little bit more. Oh, no, there we go. The depth that that wash creates. You see how the, the inside of the fingers right there look like they're darker, and that's because they are. All right, moving on to the weapon or this particular weapon, I ended up painting it all black, uh, the glossy uh, black that you saw me use, and then I used that chrome and I dry brushed the chrome. And then after this paint was dried, I used my Future Floor Shine and I went over it. That's the finish that you get. It's that metallic looking finish. I did that as well on the handle. And then uh, this I use different browns and I again I use the Agrax Earthshade as a wash over it which is the other brown that I used I used uh, this uh, XV88 and I mixed it in with the the already the color that it had the original color and then I gave it a wash and then I lightened up highlights with the Ushabti Bone mixed with the XV88 building again layers upon layers moving on to the uh, the wrist guards right there I just painted right over the original color I used the chrome and then I used the one of my the, my favorite clears are from Tamiya this clear yellow and that's what it gives it that candied look I just 
really enjoy that color and I did that to the uh, the hilt of the sword as well. The sword here is plain, painted black with the uh, the chrome dry brushed over the top. And then finally, giving the extra touches, oh, I, I painted that chrome as well, but let's take a look at the veins. Definitely like how it, the veins came out. You can see some on his chest right there. And it's just a subtle green. Let me see if it, hopefully it's picking it up. Let me turn down the light a little bit so you can see the veins there. Very intricate design and sculpting by the, uh, whoever sculpted this did a, like I mentioned earlier, a really good job. So the veins are really subtle, uh, just kind of like our veins in our hands. You see it's just slightly green. So what I did for that is I created a glaze. A glaze is different than a wash because when you, let me see, where's my, oh, well, where is it? I thought I had everything out. It looks kind of like, and it comes in a bottle right here and it's, and it's called Glaze, and it's from the same company. And I mixed it with this guy right here. And instead, you know, the wash goes all over the place. The glaze you can control. So I used a fine brush and I just lightly went over the veins. And if it was too green, I would dab it out with my fingers. And that's essentially it. And that's how I got this result. There was another thing I did on, on the face. Let me see if I can get it. May not be able to pick it up with the lighting here, but the inside of the eyeball, I used a little bit of red and I was able to do a glaze and I put red and the in the corner of the eye just like our, our eyeballs have. I may end up repainting those eyes. I don't really like the blue that the original figure came with, so. But that's for another day. So there you have it. That's Hercules. It, he's completely redone. And I think it's, uh, I mean, I think it definitely looks a lot better. You'll have to be the, you know, you, you'll have to decide for yourself if you think this is nicer looking than the original figure. For me in my collection, absolutely. I look at Marvel Legends as a blank slate to build on top of. And uh, man, I, I really like the look of this figure even more now. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to give you that tutorial, but I give you an idea of how I went about it. Maybe in a future live session, I'll do a different figure and uh, that way you can learn from it. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace. Toys, toys, toys.